Hello and welcome back to another lesson on instrumentation and control. In our previous video, see the link in the description below, we introduce you to process control loops and how they are used in a home heating system. Today we're going to expand on this and talk about how process variables are used in a typical modern control system within industry. We are then going to talk about how process variables are measured and processed. So we now know process variables are all the conditions of the process plant that are critical to its operation, both in terms of operation of the plant and to the safety of those working on the site or in neighbouring areas. To recap, the main types of process variables are pressure, level, temperature, flow. These process variables are used in industry in a few distinct ways. They can be used for process control. Just like our home heating example, some process variables are used as an input to a process control loop to maintain a desired set point. They are used as initiators for shutdown systems. These systems will shut the plant down if there are unsafe conditions. A typical example would be an input to a HIPS or high integrity pressure protection system that protects pipework or vessels from being overpressurized past their safe design limit. They can be displayed to operators of the plant. This is often to a control room operator who will see a visual representation of the plant through a HMI or human machine interface that displays live plant information and generates alarms to inform the operator there is a condition that the operator must respond to. Process variables can also be displayed to an operator through local indicators such as pressure gauges or enunciator panels. This brings us on to the question of how we detect these process variables. Devices called transmitters do this job. They are devices that are designed to detect the various process conditions and turn them into signals our process control system can understand. Transmitters are at the core of what instrumentation is about. Engineered devices that process and transmit information or signals from one protocol or format to another. Transmitters usually send their signal to a PLC or local controller in a format they'll be able to understand and interpret. Because industry has been evolving and changing for many, many years, you are likely to find a wide range of different signal types that transmitters output. This will be dependent on the age of the site the equipment is installed in. Let's talk about some of the common signal types that transmitters convert their detected process variables into. There are broadly three categories of signal types seen in industry. Pneumatic. These transmitters are powered by pressurised air. They work to regulate the pressure of their output and usually give a signal of 3 to 15 psi or 0.2 to 1 bar. Pneumatic transmitters are useful when there might not be local infrastructure in place to carry and receive electrical signals. They also have application in hazardous areas where controlling source of ignition is of high importance. In this instance, pneumatic transmitters can be used in place of ATEX or IEC rated equipment. So the next category is raw electrical signals. For electrically powered transmitters, they work by manipulating an output voltage or current. The most common form of raw electrical signals are 0 to 10 volts, 1 to 5 volts, or 4 to 20 milliamps. The 4 to 20 milliamps, this is the most common form of signal you'll find, even in modern equipment. As well as raw signals, data can be transferred using different COM signal standards. So common signal standards you'll find in industry are RS-232, RS-422, RS-485, and more modern systems use TCP IP. So some instrumentation works with both raw signals and comms protocols. HART, or Highway Addressable Remote Transducer, works to transmit a comms protocol over an existing DC current signal. This is often used by instrument technicians to interrogate and set up signals with handheld communicators that use heart while the input card the transmitter is connected to uses a 4 to 20 milliamp raw signal. Okay, now to make this a little bit clearer, let's go over an example of how a typical pressure transmitter works with a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. Let's say we have a vessel we are interested in knowing the pressure of. The pressure of this vessel is usually at 5 bar, but could potentially get up to 8 bar under certain process conditions. In this circumstance, we might see a 0-10 bar transmitter installed on one of the nozzles of the transmitter. 
the transmitter is connected to the PLC input card that is set up to output a voltage, usually 24 volts DC, and read a varying current input. The transmitter is powered by the input card voltage. It detects the pressure in the vessel and then manipulates the current in the loop by changing its own internal impedance. So at zero bar in the vessel, the transmitter gives a signal of four milliamps. At 10 bar in the vessel, the transmitter outputs 20 milliamps. The PLC can then be interrogated by a SCADA system or HMI to display the information to the operator. Notice how the zero of the transmitter is four milliamps and not zero milliamps. This gives the benefit of being able to detect if there is an issue with the transmitter. Let's say a broken cable. The input card will detect this as an out of range condition that will alert an operator there is a problem. This would not happen if zero bar was represented by zero milliamps. So we now have a basic understanding of what transmitters do and the role they play in control systems. In future videos, we are going to look at specific transmitter types and talk about the principles of their operation. If you'd like to see these videos and more on instrumentation, then please subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications of new videos. Thank you and see you next time.